أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحابته ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وينفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم احفت علينا بحكمتك وانشر علينا برحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام وصل اللهم على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله الكرام ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقتة من لسان يفقه قولي We begin as always in the name of Allah Allah he is the most gracious and he is the most merciful He is the beginning and he is the end and there is absolutely nothing like him. We also begin by sending peace and blessings upon his last prophet and his final messenger, the Khayr al-Khalq, the best of creation, the one of whom Allah has said in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين We have not sent you, O Muhammad. We have not sent you except as a mercy as a mercy unto all of mankind. Allah sent a messenger, he sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from among themselves to both Arabs and to non-Arabs, who was the most noble of them, the purest of them in nature, in an upbringing, the greatest of them in intelligence and in forbearance, the most abundant in knowledge and understanding and the strongest in certainty and resolution, and the one with the greatest compassion and mercy for them. Allah purified him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in both spirit and body, and kept him free from all faults and blemishes, and bestowed wisdom and judgment upon him by means of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah opened eyes that were blind, hearts that were covered, and ears that were deaf, and he made people believe in him. Inshallah ta'ala, I'll just spend a couple minutes during this khutbah highlighting a couple of ayat from the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the elevated state of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in verses of the Qur'an. And of course, there are, there are so many verses in the Qur'an as we know, of course, that the that the Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. However, in the interest of time, I'll just highlight a couple, inshallah ta'ala, and focus on one in particular to start off with. And this is an ayah, of course, that we, we all hear quite frequently. It is one of the most oft-recited verses in the Qur'an. In fact, it is on Yom Jum'ah here during the khutbah that we often hear this verse recited where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is elevating the state of his beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then further he is obeying all of us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is obeying all of us his servants to also elevate the, the, the status the station of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by invoking peace and blessings upon him by sending our salawat upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah says in surah al-ahzab 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels they send salah, they send prayers upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us O you who believe O you who believe send prayers and abundant salutations abundant greetings upon him the commentators, the, the mufassirun of the Qur'an, they explain this ayah in such a, a beautiful and profound way, specifically as it relates to the word salah. يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيهِ يَا أَيُّوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ Specifically to all three, which are of course in the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, the angels, and then us, Allah's servants. For us, for Allah's servants and the followers of the Prophet wasallam, it's quite straightforward in that the salah means dua, we are invoking. We are invoking peace and blessings upon the Prophet wasallam. And for the angels, it mean, it's a means of seeking forgiveness. However, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making salah upon the Prophet wasallam, it is a means of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifying him and raising him in his rank. And every time we recite this ayah, we have to think about the amazing nature of that subhanAllah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continuously pouring He's continuously pouring his blessings and his mercy upon Prophet Muhammad and elevating his rank, raising his rank from perfection to a higher state of perfection to a higher state of perfection. The companions, they ask the Prophet they're always concerned about making sure that they fulfill all of their rights and obligations as Muslims. They want it to be the best servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they wanted to, of course, since they, had the, since they had the honor of being in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they wanted to be the best followers to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. So they, they asked him, he said, we know how to give you greetings of peace. So when the verses reveal, they say, we know how to give you greetings of peace, but how do we invoke blessings upon you? This was a new concept to them. And the answer is something that, of course, I recited at the beginning of the khutbah, something that we recite on a daily basis. Many of us, of course, recite it every single time we are in salah. And this comes from the hadith where in response to this question from his companion, the Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, by teaching him and teaching all of us by extension, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid In translation, O oh Allah send prayers upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad as you have sent prayers upon Ibrahim and upon the family of Ibrahim indeed you are the praiseworthy, the magnificent. O oh Allah, send blessings upon Muhammad and upon the family of Muhammad as you have sent blessings upon Ibrahim and upon the family of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are the praiseworthy, the magnificent. When we invoke blessings, when we, when we say the salawat, when we invoke blessings upon the Prophet it shouldn't be taken lightly. We are doing something so magnificent, subhanAllah, that we are participating in this beautiful prayer, which is an indication of the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for His Messenger. And of course, the importance for us to follow His example. 
On one occasion, the Prophet ﷺ told his companions that the angel Jibreel came to him. And this was part of the relationship, subhanAllah, the beautiful relationship that Jibreel ﷺ had with the Prophet ﷺ. That of course Jibreel was his teacher, but they were also friends as well. They, they, they would share things like this. When Jibreel Alayhi heard this from Allah, he wanted to come and tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi It's uh, imagine when you receive some good news and you have a person or people that you want to share that with. That's the first thing you want to do. You hear something amazing, something magnificent, you want to go immediately and share that with people that your hearts are connected to. So Jibreel came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Oh Muhammad, does it, does it not please you? Does it not please you that your Lord says that no member of your community, no member of your ummah invokes blessings upon you, but that I bless him tenfold? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this, that no member of your community, of your ummah invokes blessings upon you, upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but that I, Allah is saying this, bless him tenfold. And that no member of your community offers you greetings of peace, but that I offer him greetings of peace tenfold. SubhanAllah. The Prophet ﷺ responded, indeed, it does bring him great joy to hear this. One of the benefits of, of, um, of the second of the two khutbahs here is that oftentimes you get reminders from people at the first one and and a brother reminded me uh, in the first khutbah that the ayah I mentioned at the beginning where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen Allah is saying in a most beautiful way that we have not sent you O Muhammad Allah is addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we have not sent you except as a mercy unto all of mankind and the, the generous brother who shared this reflection with me, he was saying that when you mention the hadith about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending his blessings tenfold, subhanAllah, it's, 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 if you try to imagine it, you can't even imagine it. That is an example of the mercy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That, that is an example of how he was a mercy unto all of mankind. SubhanAllah, imagine if you're searching for something in life and how hard we search for something. And everything, of course, is a worthy endeavor if it's something righteous and something in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But imagine how easy it is to simply do this, to simply invoke peace and blessings upon the Prophet Imagine you just see, you know, I, I having a hard day. I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless me. SubhanAllah, 10 blessings. 10 blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply by invoking peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the brother who reminded me of that, of that reflection. It is because of this that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the miser is one. This person is miserly. The miser is one who when I am mentioned in his presence does not invoke blessings upon me. The miser is one who when I am mentioned in his presence does not invoke blessings upon me. Every single time, every single time we hear the Prophet's name mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we should invoke a salawat upon him. Every single time. There is no, there is nothing to lose and SubhanAllah Allah's tenfold blessings to gain. Once the Prophet وسلم, he overheard one of his companions making dua, and he was making dua in a very quick, very hasty manner. And sometimes we do this, of course. And, and this is an opportunity to teach the companion, and of course teach all of us by extension, of course, as well. So when he heard this, then the Prophet وسلم, reminded him about essentially what is the etiquette of dua, how we make dua, and we do this every day. 
when we begin with Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. So he's saying that when one makes dua, begin by praising Allah. That is how we begin our dua, always we praise Allah. And that is even going back, of course, to one of the most beautiful duas is Surah Al-Fatiha. That's how we begin Surah Al-Fatiha, by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we later on ask his, we, we seek his assistance and we ask him to keep us on the straight path. Again, it begins with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, after you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then invoke, blessing, invoke blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then after that, continue on with the dua that you wish. And of course, one of the most beautiful aspects of this is that salawat, when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to send peace and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that dua is, is mustajab. It is, it, is an, it is an accepted dua. So part of this etiquette is that we begin by glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who gives. And then we insert salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is again an accepted dua, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accepted dua. Making salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, accepted dua. And it's almost like when we insert our dua in there, it's, it's sending it up as a package. And inshallah, if those two are accepted, then the third will be accepted as well. Salawat upon the Prophet ﷺ, it is essential for all of us. It engenders love for him, which in turn engenders love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And like I mentioned, we must think very carefully every single time, reflect very deeply on when we do this. And inshallah, that will not only result in increasing our love for the Prophet wasallam, but most importantly, gain those blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other benefits of the salawat from various hadith, and just mention a few inshallah, is that passing the sirat, passing the bridge to Jannah, to get to Jannah will be easier. It will make the path easier. It draws us closer to the Prophet wasallam. The more that we invoke blessings upon him wasallam, the closer that we would get to him, the closer we would feel towards him. Once there was a companion, Ubayy ibn Ka'b, who came to the Prophet wasallam to give us an idea as to how, how important it is to send salawat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked him, how much of my dhikr should I, should I make salawat upon you? You know, in a sense, he was very proud. He wanted to tell the Prophet that I, you know, like I, I know how important this is and, and I just want to ask you, how much is appropriate? That's kind of what he was asking, how much is appropriate? He started with the fourth. Is a fourth, is, is that appropriate? And the Prophet responded, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, that's good. But if you increase it, that's better. And then he went on to say a half, same answer. That is good, but if you increase it, that is better. Three-fourths, same answer. And then he told the Prophet wasallam that he will send all, he will make all of his, all of his afkar, all of his dhikr, salawat upon the Prophet wasallam. The Prophet responded by saying that is good. And uh, just a re another reminder, um, you know, is that uh, this, of course, doesn't mean that we don't make other athkar, but the spirit of this hadith is so beautiful and that it reminds us that there's no limit. There's no, we, we, we shouldn't put a quantity limit on how much salawat we should send upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. While this is perhaps the most oft, most frequently recited ayah in the Qur'an, that, that addresses, that describes the elevated station of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are a couple more there, there, that I wanted to mention. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll just mention a few inshallah um, before we, we close with the dua. Also in Surah Al-Ahzab, the same surah where the, the ayah that I, that I recited is mentioned, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala reminds us why 
the Prophet ﷺ should be obeyed when he says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقمنا الصلاة وآتينا الزكاة وطعنا الله ورسوله Perform salah, give zakah, and obey Allah and His Messenger wasallam. This is of course one of many very similar ayat in the Qur'an where Allah describes obedience to the Prophet wasallam as second only in obedience to him. In another ayah in the same surah, Allah describes the example, the beautiful example of the Prophet وسلم, where he says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا Indeed, you have in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a beautiful example for those who hope in Allah in the last day and remember Allah much. The Prophet, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his, his words and actions are considered to be an archetype, almost like a, like a perfect blueprint of how life should be lived in full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a beautiful description of, of this uh, is from a hadith narrated by Ali radiallahu an, karamallahu wajh, where he describes the Prophet by saying that he was the most generous of people the most truthful of people in speech, the gentlest of them in temperament, the noblest of them in social affability. If someone saw him unexpectedly, the, he was awestruck by him. And if someone associated with him knowingly, he loved him. I have never seen the like of him, either before him or after him. And the ayah, of course, ends with, وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Remember Allah much. Remember Allah with great frequency. This is, of course, the heart. This is the heart of the prophetic example because to live in accordance with the prophetic model is to live in constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The last ayah that I wanted to share, inshallah ta'ala, is in Surah Al-Isra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to pray for a portion of the night, the nawafil, the voluntary prayer. But then he also reminds him of his praiseworthy station. Allah says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَحَجَّتْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا And Allah says, and pray for a part of the night as additional, as voluntary worship for you. It is expected that your Lord will raise you to مَقَامًا mahmud to a praiseworthy station. If I can ask people in the back to please move forward, inshallah, to make, uh, make room. Abu Huraira related that the Messenger of Allah said وسلم, with regards to this ayah that the praiseworthy station is the station where I will intercede for my nation. This is, this is the, the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the Prophet this beautiful gift of interceding on behalf of, of his, of his uh, followers. Ibn Abbas then further said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall raise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to a praiseworthy station in which he shall be praised by the first and the last and in which he will look on the entire creation. He shall ask and he shall be given and he shall intercede and his intercession shall be accepted. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be amongst those. Before I close with a dua, I just wanted to Remind everybody, um, 
a reminder from Sheikh Atif, he asked me to, uh, to relay this important uh, announcement, uh, is that, uh, um, that there's a program tonight here at the Masjid. It's very important and he, he personally asked me to share this uh, with you and encourage all of you to come. And that there, amongst the many things of course that we as a community have to work on is, is this idea of, of building building families which are in accordance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed and of course in following of the example of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we try our best and, and we keep on trying and when we, when, we, um, when we hit bumps in the road we continue trying and, and keep on turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that is just what we do we don't, we don't give up we don't run into a situation where we are affected by something, by some affliction, and then we give up. Uh, and the program tonight is aimed directly um, at addressing one of the issues, um, like I said, that Sheikh Atif mentioned, that as his position as uh, Imam here, he deals with this on a regular basis. And it's a very difficult uh, topic to talk about, it's very difficult to mention, some people are uncomfortable with it, and that's okay. Um, and that is the issue of pornography. Um, and that issue will be discussed uh, tonight. Uh, and uh, it's very important that all of us come and, and take benefit, inshallah. Uh, and we could, we, could, we could all, inshallah, benefit from, from learning how to, build, uh, how to build families, inshallah, that can, um, that can lead us towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Another uh, quick announcement, I shouldn't say quick announcement, another, there's a request for du'as as well. There's uh, du'as for people who are ill and du'as for people who have passed away. Um, for people, uh, these, these following people requested du'as uh, because they are, they are ill. These are our brother Qadir, uh, Nasreen Hussain, Harun Hussain, Ahmed Farah, Amina Farah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them complete uh, shifa and speedy recovery. Um, there's also du'as uh, requested for um, a few people who have passed away, including Sister Sosan Hakim, Brother Abu Ghafoor, Bibi Sayyid, Sister Fozia Bakir and Sayyidah Maryam Runa, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them maghfirah and rahmah um, and to grant um, patience and uh, iman to their families. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanah wa fi al-akhirati hasanah wa qina adhab al-nar wa tkhinna al-jannata ma'al abrar ya azizu ya ghaffar ya rabbul alameen wa sqina min hawdi nabiyika muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sharbatan haniyatan mariyatan la nadma ba'dha abada O Allah, we ask you for your love, the love of those who love you, and the actions that make us attain unto your love. O Allah, we ask you to bless us, to obey your command, and constantly invoke peace and blessings upon your beloved. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim. Allah, we ask you to open our hearts to all of your servants and all people who are suffering, people who are suffering from oppression, people who are suffering from war, people who are suffering from poverty, from sadness, from illness. Allah, we ask you for your forgiveness for not doing enough to serve humanity and we ask that you bless us to be able to do more. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين واقم الصلاة